continual stream of revenue, and certainly connected TV is, is one way to do that. Um, the hard part for me as a consumer is that the interfaces that I interact with on my TV are generally not great, uh, and that's being polite. Um, I think for a hardware manufacturer to jump into the software game and start uh, building out those kind of interfaces, um, it's probably not the best idea. Um, that's why we stick with software, um, and that's what we're really focused on. Um, I think. You know, what I've seen so far, so I've, I've played with the Yahoo widgets, I've played with the Netflix experience, I've played with the Voodoo experience. Um, as, uh, as Greg said, you know, some of this stuff looks promising but isn't really compelling from a consumer perspective yet. Um, I think Voodoo has done a, a great job of creating a user experience that um, is fast and nimble. They actually stream the entire interface that they offer uh, on the, on the uh, TV, so they're able to make changes on the fly pretty quickly. Um, Netflix has done a good job of getting onto a variety of different devices, whether it's um, TVs or Microsoft Xbox 360 or Boxy. Um, so I think you know certainly that number will grow. Um, I think from the from the TV maker's perspective, it's really the kind of holy grail of selling the TV and then being able to sell services on top of that. So for continuing with Vic, um, <clears throat> so they're IP TVs, but consumers we've surveyed on both coasts. Uh, a lot of consumers presume they can just go to any internet URL. Um, a lot of consumers uh, are prosumers, and they do understand, oh, okay, it's Yahoo widgets on this TV. There are my gateways to other services. I'm not going to be able to watch my neighbor's uh, baby cam. Um, so the confusion the two of you brought up is, is clearly going to get uh, worse before uh, Christmas than, than better. Um, and so the question is, uh, as we continue with the panel here, um, will, will those early adopters who uh, who purchase perhaps their second HDTV, set down some IPTV, uh, become disappointed with this, jaundiced, or will they say, wow, now I know why I need a ZD, now I know why I need uh, uh, a Moxie box. Continue with you, Vic. Well, yeah, good points, Rick. Um, look, I think a lot of it is going to come back to what is the user's expectation of this box. So, yes, we've got internet connections. They've been running around inside the TV for a long time. Exposing them out makes a lot of sense, sort of, right? Uh, Blu-ray players all have connectivity to them. We can buy Roku boxes and other things. So we certainly can get to the internet, whatever that really means. Um, as far as a unifying experience, I agree that, that it really, if we have a plethora of different experiences on these TVs, that's going to be anti-consumer, not pro-consumer. Uh, Yahoo TV Widgets, I think, is doing a great job of trying to unify that a bit. But back to the user expectation, I think if we're not careful here, we are going to position this and pitch this as it's the internet. So I can now go to Hulu, I can go to ABC, I can go to others. Yahoo TV widgets is not meant to play video, it's meant to bring widgets, stocks, weather, fantasy football games, and, and the like. It's going to be very good at that, that's what it's focused at. There, there are a lot of developers that have just been allowed into the program, that's going to be pretty exciting. Just like I can go and build up my custom Google homepage as I do. There are going to be a lot of interesting things. I put apps on my iPhone with 70,000 apps I can pick from. That's kind of a compelling thing to have, potentially, on my TV. But again, let's not confuse that with prime TV video. The core of the technology today that's in these TVs is not capable of openly browsing and, more importantly, playing a wide variety of codecs. You know, so I can't play a move codec and onto codec. Uh, you know, any, any of those. It's just not possible in today's <coughs> platform, right? That's changing two years from now. I, I'll, I'll go on record as saying two years from now, they will be able to do that. And it won't cost any more on the hardware. Then the question will come down to, yeah, it's already running in the display. How do we give the user a nice, clean, consistent interface? Rick, one of the, one of the comments I'll make is I, 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 was, in the, I uh, was at the panel as well with the Best Buy gentleman said 12%. But I think what he meant was 12% of the SKUs yeah. are internet connected, not 12% of the sales. Right. So it is going to be interesting to see how they're presented, how they're perceived, and therefore that, that will measure whether or not the expectation was met or not. So. Okay. And Nick, is this an opportunity for you, or how do you see it? Well, I think um, the net TVs are extremely exciting. Um, I don't know whether, I mean, in Japan, open TV ships um, browser in all the Panasonic TVs. So Japan is if you'd like, as usual, years ahead of us when it comes to connected TVs. They've had them for a while. They have a special broadcast markup language. And when you buy a Panasonic or a Sony or one of the Toshiba TVs and you switch it on, it does connect to the internet. And, you know, 
it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the internet, as the internet is, is, is not good. Even on a high definition TV, 10 foot view, it doesn't work. Um, but, you know, in Japan, when you switch on your Panasonic TV and you press the browser, um, it takes you to the Panasonic homepage. So immediately Panasonic now control that user experience. But it's very interesting that um, they've been doing it, they've been doing it for years, and, you know, it's... I think, you know, if the user expects I want to browse the internet on my TV, they're going to be very disappointed. I mean, OpenCV also do this in Europe, and they're disappointed about it in Europe, because the content isn't designed for a TV screen ratio, size, resolution. Um, and especially from a 10-foot view, it's just not designed. So, the Yahoo Widgets is a good approach because they're trying to create content for that experience, thus making the experience a little bit more rewarding, rather than just saying, you know, cruise the internet. I think it's exciting because it's an open, well, it's mostly an open platform, Yahoo Widgets. So it's just very interesting to see what people come up with. It's not the same as the iPhone App Store because the iPhone App Store is, the relationship is very different from iPhone App Store, you can take what you've learned from the PC and put it on an iPhone because it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the device and the user. 10-foot TV viewing experience is very different. So if we have TV widgets and people start saying, oh, I've created an iPhone app, I'm just going to put it on Yahoo widgets, most of them will just fail because I don't want to have my email pop up or my uh, stock quotes pop up whilst we're watching House. My wife is not going to be happy. <laughs> so you've got to realize that TV and 10-foot view is a, a many-to-one relationship. It's not a one-to-one, -one, and therefore the apps that will win on Yahoo widgets or whatever widget framework, whether it's the, uh, the NAGRA widget framework, the Open TV widget framework, the Yahoo widget framework. It's got to be completely, it's going to be new. Uh, I don't think anyone or any of us yet know what the killer app out there is that someone's going to come up with, which is we're going to go, yes, that's why I've got a net TV. We haven't, got, we haven't seen it yet. And Paul, it's clearly in North America, statistically, most of those Best Buy customers they're aiming are going to be attaching Motorola set-top boxes and drive that modem. So 